I'm giving you. And that's the way I look at. You're feeding me more than I am giving you. So or shall we call it the exchange is fair. But when we change from that level and say, well, I'm a teacher and you're a student, now that changes the whole concept. Okay? Is that case number three? Hmm. Well, let's talk about Iran. This was a question. We just had two nights at Pearl Harbor, and we hadn't even gone into Ho'oponopono. And this young lady came up and she said, you know, I was very much concerned about Iran and would like to know, what can we do? Well, they haven't even studied this. We hadn't even gone into this. So I thought and I said, well, well and good. Since we haven't done, I'll just give it to them in one solid pill. So we started to build it up. We had Iran and we go back to the beginning and when we think that there are many other nations who are concerned about Iran, we're going back to Churchill's time and Roosevelt's time and many others. It is. And by the time you got through, this wall isn't sufficient. You sure you want to do this one? I can't even get the word of the country up right. <laughs> well, that's okay. That's all right. Iran is okay. So then we start with, with the, and if, the strange part of it, one of the members, oh, you were. You had the uh, the money. You still have that. An Iranian dollar. An Iranian dollar. Mm -hmm. I was so, on an airline about three years before that um, by two passengers I didn't know, and they said that we were trying to communicate back and forth with different languages. They'd given it to me, and they said, "Here, remember us by this." And I put it in my wallet. And I didn't think too much of it. And going to the Pearl Harbor class, I had to get a pass to get in the gate, and I put that in my wallet. And as I pulled that out that night, the Iranian dollar fell out. So it was not a coincidence at all that this girl would ask at that moment for Iran. And then uh, so we had, so that was a physical stimulus that after I cleansed it, I passed it around to the students so they would see the Shah's picture, have a, a feel of the currency. And uh, so that was our first physical stimulus. So we started with the Shah, started Ayatollah Khomeini, and we went back before that and all the way down the countries that affected the land gods, the river gods, the mountain gods, all of these gods, the nature spirits, and all the earthbound souls from the beginning. So it was, that board isn't enough. Do you want them to try to open up on No, no. Hmm? No. We're going to do it in a workshop. Okay, then you don't need to hear any No, more. no. So just to give you an idea that it just goes on and on and on and on. But we put on as much as we possibly can because it's a visual stimulus for the people to their subconscious or low self that these are the people involved. Then we had all of the, uh, uh, the hostages. Where did they come from? Well, we don't know where they came from, so we will say wherever they came from is important. So if they came from New Jersey, they came from New York, wherever they, we have to have, that's where the other cords are connected to. So we work on all of them. So the, the question arises, what can be done? It's not for what we can do, but I think we leave it up to the divine forces mm -hmm. to do that which is right. Could we do something like a... On, on um, let's say the prejudice and the separateness that uh, exists between the races and things like maybe between the Halleys and the Hawaiians or the different races and things, or is that too broad? Well, now the question comes out, can we do a Ho'oponopono between the Halleys and the Hawaiians because of the resentments that comes up? I welcome any question mm -hmm. as such. <laughs> yes? Could you not do a a uh, for all of humanity? Yeah. Oh yes, that's quite a qu quite a large area. That you, then we need a world map. I, I would require a world map because then you're going into much deeper than just what you're anticipating. It is a fantastic thing. It can go on and on, but when we say we're saying prayers for peace when peace starts within the individual. 
within the family, within the ancestral groups, within the nation. So what is a nation made up of but individuals? Now that's interesting because um, in a school we had, uh, I had an invitation to talk to a group of youngsters. I think they're slow learners, but uh, they're, they're not too sold on schooling to begin with. But they're beautiful children. So I went over to talk to these youngsters and they said, what are you going to talk to us about? I said, know thyself. Something that you don't have in the Hawaiian books. They have, I said, you can read all the books like these, but you don't have something that says, do you know yourself? So I covered a little of that. And this youngster said, boy, that's good for my old lady. She certainly <laughs> needs it. <laughs> so anyway, the teachers were so enthused about it that they said, come back and talk to the whole student body. I said, I will not, because of the fact that I feel I would like to teach the teachers so the teachers will be able to impart to the students not only the understanding, because the students are their families. They are responsible to the students. So with the kind of uh, conduct that's going on in the schools, that if a teacher was to be responsible for the students that are in her class, and there's a disruptive student there, then it's up to that teacher to do ho'oponopono in absentee for that student and the parents. <coughs> because the parents have a lot of influence in the children, too, so it works two ways. And doing it in absentee is quite effective without the child knowing, and he becomes a better person the parents may become a better responsible person. So I think I will be having a session for that, which I feel the adults, the teachers, should be rather than giving it as a responsibility of the school. But it's broken down to classrooms, it's okay. Are there any other questions? Yes. from over here about giving people clothing from them. Yes, that was very interesting. The idea that we give these clothing that we have or anything that we have to charity. I put them all in a heap, then I demagnetize them. I do a ho'oponopono and I transmute all that energy to pure light. Nothing remains of myself on it. Not even, not a bit of my aka cord or my family, so anything is on that. So when it's sold out at these little uh, workshops or something, you do not have a trace of your aka cord in it. The Hawaiians were very particular about clothing, about any of their personal possessions, because in the old days, the kahunas would use it as a uh, physical stimulus to send back to you a curse or whatever it may be. So this is why when Dr. Blazer was talking about a specific container for the excrement or any of these things, because these would be used by someone else as a means of getting back at you. Because again, there is your aka cord. It's in everything that's a part of you, whether it's your clothing, excrement, or what it is, or sputum. Oh, the Hawaiians were very, very particular about these things. So that's why when we go into Ho'oponopono, it's a clearing away, the cleansing, the release of these attachments that we have created or, or moved into areas where all these things accumulate and, and, and affect us. So when we are doing this for ourselves, our families, relatives, and ancestors, you're taking them all together through this whole trip. You're not asking just for yourself, but you're asking for your family, relatives, and ancestors. Yes? Then this should be done for antiques that we bought. That's a good question. We should do this for our antiques that we bought. Very good question. Antiques. Who created the antique? Well, Mr. Jones, way back in the 15th century. Then probably a thief got hold of it and passed through many hands and many aka cords were on it. Then it gets to the auctioneer and from here over to someone else and somebody purchased it and down to you. So when you get that, it has the impregnation of all the unhi pilis on it. 
So what we do is do a ho'oponopono, and through the method of transmuting, you're able to release that. How about gifts? A beach pun? When you give a gift, your cord goes with the gift, or should you? I do. Oh, I receive something. The moment someone hands me, I've already programmed it all. Whatever his vibration is not there. Or someone extends their hand. You can do a quickie right there. Yes. It is, you know, and it's very helpful. What about in the case of uh, the death of a loved one, the individual is the, the close to the loved one, 